Hello everyone, welcome to Faith Credo. It's a pleasure coming your way once again with this weekly devotional. I believe the Lord is blessing you and we are trusting him to keep impacting our lives through his word. Hallelujah. Let's share a word of prayer. Father, we are at your feet once again, Lord. Help us to understand your word and grace us to be able to live it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Beloved, for the past weeks we've been, you know, going through a series um, titled New Beginning. And the Lord has been so good and so gracious to us. And we've seen some of the things that hinder us from starting afresh. Some of the things that hinder us from taking or making the effort to begin afresh. Especially where we find ourselves wanting and by the grace of God, I believe God has been faithful in helping us understanding it and then living better lives so that we can become better believers. Hallelujah. That is the essence of what we do, that we will grow in faith. Today, we want to look at how we can be able to overcome those limitations. Therefore, my theme this day is how do I do it? How do I do it? And our anchor scripture is Ezekiel 36, verse 26. Let's hear the word of God. And I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. Hallelujah. That is the word of God. He will give us a new heart and a new spirit and remove from us those stubborn stony hearts that have hindered us from hearing his word and applying his word so what are the ways that we can you know do or what are the things that we can do in order to start afresh in order to overcome the limitations that have hindered us from achieving the counsel of god for our lives number one and it is a very important point is prayer prayer somebody said prayer is the key somebody said prayer is the master key but we say prayer first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 says pray without ceasing pray without ceasing and that is exactly what it should be for anyone who want to start afresh for anyone that want to start something new for anyone that want to make something out of your life the most important thing you need to do is to pray and not just praying but we say we should not pray amiss we should know what we are praying for and concentrate on it hallelujah the more we pray the more we connect to god and the more we know god's agenda for our lives remember prayer is not just us um saying the things we need or what we want god to do for us no it also means us listening to god and taking instructions from god as to how we should be able to do the things we should do the more we pray the more our trust in god deepens the more we believe him the more we rely on him hallelujah and the more our fears are weakened and we are able to take that step of faith and move forward in life jeremiah 29 verse 12 says then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and i will hear you hallelujah he said then we will call upon him and as we do he the lord will hear us and then we'll be able to do as he said child of god if you want to break calm if you want to start afresh if you want to make meaning out of your situation if you want to see yourself succeeding for that project you are starting afresh i want to encourage you to lay hold of prayer and pray and god is going to see you through hallelujah number two we should learn to lean on and depend absolutely on the holy spirit at all times lean on and depend absolutely on the holy spirit at all times and i want to illustrate this uh for you let me share something that happened uh, to me some time back so one day i needed to get uh, a cream you know uh, and this is not a popular cream and i had a direction 
there's a particular open market where you can go and get that cream you know how our markets are in africa and so i went to that place where i i actually thought i would get the cream and went to the shop all you know so boldly confidently let me put that way confidently that i was going to get that cream there lo and behold that cream was not there and i asked them how can i get it and they said oh why don't you call the number why don't you do this but i had i've been told that that is exactly where you get that cream as i stepped out of that shop I prayed a simple prayer. I said, Holy Spirit, I don't know where I'm going to get this cream, but I know that I need it and I know that I'll get it here. Direct me to where I am going to get it. Beloved, you will not believe it. I started walking towards uh, the car where I've parked my car. And I was like, why am I going to where I've parked my car? That means I'm going away. But I've prayed and I believe the Lord. So I started walking towards where I parked the car. All of a sudden, I stopped, took a left turn, and I continued walking again. Then I stopped again in front of an open stall, a small stall, and where I stopped, there was nothing. It was full stalls that were there. It was they, they don't sell anything that had any relationship with what I'm looking for. I stopped there and I asked at the lady, I need so and so cream. And she called her neighbor and said, she could just call the name and say, somebody want to buy this. It's unbelievable. I was so shocked. There's nothing in my wildest imagination that would tell me that I would get that cream at that point. In fact, the woman had to reach out to where she has packed seven things and retrieve the cream and sold it to me. And it dawned on me that this is nothing but the hand of God. Why am I sharing this with you? If we can rely on God to, to lead us in certain things that are as simple as mundane, let me put it that way, as something I need to buy in a market, why can't we trust God for the big things in our life? Hallelujah. Trust God. If God can lead me to exactly where I can get that cream in a very big open market, God led me step by step and I got it. In fact, I was so amazed at the love of God, at the guidance of God, at the, the way the Holy Spirit leads us. And He gave me a kind of assurance that I can trust in this God. Child of God, I want to encourage you. I don't know the area you will want to start afresh. I don't know the area that you are facing challenges in your life. I don't know even the number of times that you have tried and you have not succeeded. I want to encourage you. Make the Holy Spirit your friend. He's not just there, you know, to lead us in spiritual things. He is our friend. He is our comforter. He is our guide. He guides us at every point in life. If we can only cultivate that attitude of having fellowship, a sweet rapport with him, sharing the things, our, our intimate things with him, I want to, you know, encourage you. The Holy Spirit has never disappointed me and he will not disappoint you. And there are countless testimonies of how the Holy Spirit always guides us. Even when we are doing our transactions, even the partners we can partner with, even the way we should send our money, handle our money on everything, even in our relationship, the Holy Spirit knows everything and he will teach us. I want to encourage you, lean on him. Trust on him, not just for the big things, even for the smaller things. And you are going to see how he's going to, you know, lead you. We are lost, confused, terrified, and need a helper. And at every point we feel such emotions, he is there. He is the counselor that will direct us. And remember, the Holy Spirit, the most beautiful aspect of it is that he does not judge us. When we make mistakes, men are prone to judging us. Men are prone to telling us, you could have done it this way. Why are you? Why did you behave this way? But the Holy Spirit, he will not be that hard. He will not judge us. Hallelujah. He will correct us. And when he needs to be hard on us, he can be hard on us actually. But then he does not judge us. He understands us. Hallelujah. Amen. John 14, 16 to 18 says something. I want to read it for you. He said, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper 
to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Isn't that reassuring? Our Lord Jesus is saying that he will not leave us as orphans. He will not leave us. He will give us the Holy Spirit. And he will come to us. Don't let your soul be crushed with that weight you are carrying. The Holy Spirit will guide you. He will lead you in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three, get up and move. That's the number three, you know, uh, way to, to start afresh or to overcome is to get up and move. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10 have this to say. Said, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy mind. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. In other words, friend, this is the time to live. In the grave, there is no work. Yes, there is no device. There is no knowledge. There is no wisdom. Once you are done with this earth, once you cross over, those things are no more relevant. So this is the time for you to get up and live. Don't allow procrastination. Don't allow fear. Don't allow, you know, the fear of man, the fear of what people will do, hinder you from doing what you ought to do. Get up today. Make the most of what God has offered you in life. Take that step today. Break up your fallow ground and it will be done. It is doable. Do it. Just do it. Hallelujah. And may God be your helper. In Jesus' name. Number four, and the final for this session is apply discipline to whatever you do. Apply discipline to whatever you do. Sit down and plan. Seek knowledge and understanding in the areas of interest. Take counsel. Execute your plans. And if you don't succeed, try again. Let me mention this again. It says sit down and plan. Seek knowledge and understanding in your area of interest. Take counsel from those who have been there before or those who have knowledge about what you want to do. Execute your plans and if you don't succeed, try again. Listen, my dear friend, nothing succeeds without you disciplining yourself. Discipline your appetite. Discipline you, the places you go. Discipline the kind of friends you allow yourself to make. Discipline the conversations you allow yourself to engage with people. Discipline the things you wear. Discipline the things you eat. Hallelujah. When you apply discipline to your life, you, you will realize that things will begin to fall into place. Look at what the word of God says in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 11. Look at it. It said, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Hallelujah. Even the Bible acknowledges it, that no discipline uh, seems pleasant. To be disciplined is not, it's not an easy thing. It means that you, if you're somebody who is given to, you know, doing the way you want to uh, live your life, you live the way you want to live your life, it means that you now have to organize yourself and sit down. If you are one who is used to walking about, gallivating around at every time, it means that you need to learn how to stay at one place. If you are one who is given to jumping from one project to another project, you start, you don't get, you don't see the end of the project, you jump to another one, it is time to sit down and wait. Patiently wait for your project to mature and you can see the fruit of your labor. Hallelujah. Nobody builds without being disciplined. Count the cost. Count what you need you know, to achieve that dream. Sit down and plan. Hallelujah. And if you check those who have been successful in the things they do, many of them, uh, of them have done it over and over again. Many have failed, but they sat down and they tried again. Don't just wish it. Don't just dream it. But have the tenacity to sit down 
and be disciplined in what you want to achieve. And as you do, trust me, you are going to see results in that area. Hallelujah. May God be your helper and may the Holy Spirit also be your God as you do all these things. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, question for this week. How is your relationship with the Holy Spirit? Can you confidently call upon Him? Amen. Action point. Make a list of the areas you need the Holy Spirit help today. Make a list of the areas you need the help of the Holy Spirit today. Amen. Do that and you see yourself following Him. Hallelujah. Now, a fixed declaration for today. By my God, I shall do mighty works. By strength shall no man prevail. By the help of the Holy Spirit, I shall prevail. This week, I step out in faith, trusting the Holy Spirit. I shall do mighty works. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. May it be so according to your words. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Bible reading for today, day one, Ezekiel 36, verse 26. Day two, 1 Peter 1, 3. Day three, Isaiah 65, verse 17. Day four, John 14, 16. And also, verse 26. Day five, Romans 5, verse 5. Day 6, Hebrews 12, 11. And finally, day 7, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17. Let's share a word of prayer. The Lord be our helper, be our guide, even as we purpose to start afresh. Lord, help us. As the challenges come, Lord, help us to be able to overcome. Fill our mouth with testimonies. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. It's been a pleasure, precious one. And I believe the Lord is going to help you. Believe you me, as you rely on the Holy Spirit, He will come true for you. Remember, share this clip so that other people can also be blessed. And don't hesitate to get in touch if need be. The Lord bless you and have a pleasant week. Amen. Reverend Julia is a counselor, children church minister, conference speaker, and a teacher of God's word, grace with a healing anointing. For bookings and updates on her messages, devotionals, and related events, please call 055-081-2255 or 020-77-58227 or send an email at rev.juliaoji at gmail.com. Like and follow her social media handles on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at Rev Julia Oji. Till she comes your way again with another session of the Faith Cradle, stay strong and favoured. God bless you. Connect with Apostle Freddie and Julia Oji for a heavenly experience of glory with a host of other believers at the Miracle Revival Chapel International. Friend, join any of our services on the days on your screen. A divine encounter awaits you. God bless you.